All right, hi, welcome. Uh, this is uh, Datastax Enterprise Real-Time Analytics. Uh, the title, official title was uh, searching for uh, data in the big data haystack or something like that. Um, so my name's Jason Rutherglen. I work at Datastax. Let's go to the next one. Uh, we'll basically work on Datastax Enterprise. I've worked on the solar integration for the most part, so I do a lot of support and that sort of thing in development. Um, so, and I've done a, I did, did, did one book, Programming Hive, for uh, O'Reilly, and I did, uh, I'm doing Introduction to Solar uh, for O'Reilly. So, Datastax, we, we kind of know what Datastax is, but we, we do Cassandra and we do Datastax Enterprise. Um, we've got Datastax Enterprise 3X, so that's kind of our main, uh, main version that we've got going on. Um, it's a single stack, so it's uh, everything integrated into one process, Cassandra, Solar, Hadoop, and we do some consulting and support uh, around the product. So uh, I'm going to know with big data. Um, I just want to, how many people have used Solar? Okay. Nice. And uh, Cassandra? More? Okay. A little bit more. Good. So, um, and how many people have used Hadoop? Okay. Nice. So, uh, like people, one of the things, uh, one of the useful things for so to use, one of the reasons to use Solar is to do real time analytics. Um, in this case, it's not really, it's near real time, not so much real time. Um, Cassandra is, I would say, re real time, but in, in Solar, it's not efficient to do that. So, uh, the, when we're talking about near real time, we're talking about a second latency. So basically, that's you, you do, you submit a document, uh, and then you'll search on, you'll be able to search on it within about a second or so. Um, and so, why not a relational database? Uh, basically, it's just Solar provides horizontal scalability, just like Cassandra, just like Hadoop. Uh, I mean, a lot of our customers are going from relational to big data. Uh, Solar is really useful for uh, converting SQL applications over to the big data space. Uh, it typically, in those applications, are not the, the batch-based kind, but it's the kind where they want, like it's a user interface or something, and people want to do interactive queries, ad hoc queries. Um, Solar gives you uh, the, the query t latency is, should be around 100 milliseconds or so, so it's pretty, it's pretty uh, hot, just like Google. Um, and then you get the, you know, it's the costs are a lot less and stuff like that. Um, so you might ask, you're probably familiar with Solar Cloud and you know Elasticsearch and stuff like that. So why, why Cassandra? Why, why, why are we integrating Solar with Cassandra? Well, basically, we leverage everything that's good about Cassandra, everything that's been built into there to do distributed stuff, multiple data centers, and all that. Uh, and then we. We, fo we, solar, we, fo we let Solar do the queries and the indexing, and that's it. So we don't, we don't use any Solar Cloud or anything like that um, because we don't need to. We get all that with Cassandra. And Cassandra, you know, you're probably familiar, but it's a simple, simple Dynamo model. Um, works really well in distributed environments. And it just automat the Dynamo model takes care of placing, you know, where the documents go and all that stuff. So it's very... Uh, it's very it's in, it's it's a fairly simple uh, architecture in that regard. So I mean you're, pro you're probably familiar with the whole Cassandra versus HBase thing, but Cassandra is just a lot easier to use. Uh, let's see. So batch analytics, people, people, you know, there's there's basically the way I look at things. There's two use cases. There's batch analytics, which is you kind of wait a little little bit, and you're probably going to do a join. Um, otherwise, you if you otherwise you can pretty much just just use Solar. Or you can use Cassandra, uh, and then you're going to get the uh, the near real time. Uh, typically, if you're doing batch analytics, then you're going to use Hive, and you're going to have to do UDFs and stuff like that. And none of that really ports over to Solar, so there's not really any any relationship there. Um, so real time analytics, I think you can use Solar. You can use do complex event processing. Uh, you can do, do Cassandra, and then there's newer stuff, which I kind of hesitate to put in here, uh, which is like um, 
uh, Impala and uh, Stinger and stuff like that for Hive. And that's kind of, that's the latency there is typically 30 seconds, like five seconds. So I, I wasn't sure where to put that. Um, complex event processing is like doing all the calculations in real time. Um, so it's a little different because the data is never really at, the, da the data is at rest, but the, the, every, all the queries are essentially computed in as the data is streamed through. So it's a different architecture, whereas Solar actually iterates on the data at rest, or typically in RAM, basically. Um, so Lucene is a, it's a Java library, and it's kind of like Lucene and Solar are one Apache project. Uh, it's basically, it, at its basic form, it's an inverted index, but it's grown to be a lot more. It was originally for text analytics. Um, it's very high speed, so it's, very, it's highly optimized for today's uh, computers, basically. So what is an inverted index? It's important to know what an inverted in index is because that's the basic for, base, basis for the whole uh, solar and lucene ecosystem. Um, it's very simple, really. It's just a terms dictionary. So it's like a sorted list of terms or words. Uh, and then each word post, uh, points to a posting list. And a posting list is simply some metadata. And it's, but in its basic form, it's a set of document IDs, which are integers. And so it, and then all, an inverted index will also, well, Lucene will tokenize text. Um, a lot of our customers tend to not actually do too much text analytics, and they're more focused on just raw, um, what I would call like relational database types of queries. So that's, it's a, it's a little different than your typical text, text uh, query type of thing. Um, but we do support that, of course. Um, so Solar is built around Lucene. Uh, it's basically like a, it's kind of like the wrapper that Lucene needs, and people always kind of reinvent the wheel if they're just using raw Lucene. Uh, it adds fastening distributed search, and we use both, we implement both of those in DataStax Enterprise. Um, what's, what's been missing for a number of years is the whole distributed cloud type of capability, so that they can, in the, in the Apache Solar community, they, they started working on Solar Cloud. Uh, it's my opinion, it's got a little ways to go to be uh, totally useful. Uh, but it, it's, uh, that uses Zookeeper and provides kind of the missing cloud piece. Uh, in DataStax Enterprise, of course, using Cassandra, then we get the cloud piece really easily there. Uh, so Solar Cloud uses Zookeeper. Uh, I think that's kind of a fatal flaw. Uh, Zookeeper is like an yet another system you have to manage. Um, Cassandra is peer-to-peer, -peer, so it's a lot easier to, to, to manage, and you get the multiple data center replication. Um, I think it's based, I think Solar Cloud's playing catch up, um, things like Elasticsearch. Um, Elasticsearch has been out there a little bit longer, and it focused on the things that Solar didn't provide for a number of years, and that was near real-time search and uh, distributed stuff, so like the cloud types of capabilities. Um, but it's the, the distributed features are not as robust as Cassandra, but I think it's a little bit better than Solar Cloud. So, basic Cassandra concepts, probably this is f somewhat redundant, but uh, columns, column families, key spaces, uh, it's peer to peer, uh, it's eventually consistent. So, that's a little different than Solar Cloud, which is uh, it elects a leader and things like that. Um, and does uh, leader type of replication. And Cassandra, we use the, uh, the big table model for the basic uh, uh, data modeling. So it, one of the things about Lucene and Cassandra that's really interesting is they both kind of implement the, the same type of um, log structured merge tree. And that means that uh, if, you're if you're buying hardware and stuff like that for a uh, data sex enterprise installation, then you pretty much can, whatever's gonna work for your Cassandra nodes, it's gonna also work for your solar nodes, uh, just the same. So like SSDs are really good. Uh, you wanna be able, to, you have to tune the heap, and so there's a lot of similarities in, in using the two, in using a, uh, having solar nodes in your, in your system. So uh, 
basically, all, all we do with DataSax Enterprise and Solar is we store the data in Cassandra and we index the data in Solar, and that's it. Um, and we let Cassandra place the data on given nodes and things like that, do all the replication. Um, we let Cassandra take care of which nodes are online, et cetera, and things like that. So there's a very clean uh, delineation between Solar and Cassandra. Basically, Solar is only a secondary index, and uh, that's, that's benefited us greatly in terms of um, not having to build a distributed Solar Cloud features into Solar. So I call it a separation of church and state, basically. Uh, so indexing, so typically uh, people are, you're doing a lot of indexing when you're putting data into solar. Uh, it's a CPU intensive task, it's not an I.O. bound task typically. Uh, and we've done a lot of optimizations to make that fast with DataStax Enterprise. Queries on the other hand are typically uh, I.O. bound. So if the index is not in RAM, basically everything's gonna slow down by an order of magnitude, the queries, uh, both in terms of how many queries per second you get and the overall query latency, which is the raw query times. Um, Solar, Lucene does multi-threaded queries. Uh, Solar does not, something that we're looking at putting in the DataStax Enterprise. So each, each unlike uh, Solar Cloud and Elasticsearch, we index, we always index on each node. So we're not replicating uh, Lucene segments and indexes around. Uh, that keeps things very clean. And it also, it's kind of, we have to do that because of the eventual consistency model. So, and then another thing that we do is in, when, anytime you have a distributed search is we round rob, automatically round robin queries to different nodes. So if you have a replication factor greater than one, like two or three or something like that, then um, you just hit a node and it's just gonna automatically um, balance the distributed query across nodes for you. So you don't have to really worry about that, which is a nice feature. So 3.01 and 3.02 is the current release of DataStax Enterprise. Um, we add a lot of cool features like indexing, re-indexing basically. So because we have all the data stored in Cassandra, you can just, you can just do a command and, and re-index all your data. So if you change your schema, which is something people do in Solar a lot, um, let's say you wanna change like a string to an int or something like that, then you, re you have to actually re-index, you have to recreate the entire index. Um, and in, the, in typical usual Solar and Solar Cloud and Elasticsearch, there's, it's, it's not easy, but in, in uh, DataStax Enterprise, we make it very, very easy, and you just do a, uh, a command, uh, uh, a rest command, and it's very easy. And yeah, so there's no custom code required and that sort of thing. Um, so we added some, some also some interesting features, like you can view the heap space, the heap usage. People typically run out of uh, heap space when they're using solar. And uh, I would say it, it, in doing support, that's a very common uh, problem. So we allow you to view the memory usage there, uh, and that allows you to do capacity planning, which is very, it's just something that people miss usually. And then it's an afterthought, and we have to come in and try to fix it. Uh, so we also do multi-threaded index, re-indexing for repair. That's, that was a new feature we added. So that means when you add in more nodes, you do repair, and uh, it's pretty much gonna max the CPU out, get, it done, get the node up, it's, so the node will come up as fast as possible. And just some other features we added. We have full security in Solar, so uh, it's Kerberos SSL, um, password authentication between nodes and when, you're, when your client application talks to a given node. Um, so those are some cool features that we added. Uh, three point, DataStax Enterprise 3.1, uh, we added something that Solar doesn't have, which is per segment filters and um, facets. Uh, we also have multi-value facets. Uh, we're, we're including Solar 4.3, which has something cool called dot values. Uh, I'll probably do a blog post uh, for that soon, and I'll probably do blog posts on the per segment filters and things like that. Um, probably this is, I'm not sure how much this, 
this makes sense, uh, but it's, I, I consider this a major pain point for solar, and we, we kind of needed to do it because we do uh, range queries in solar to uh, correspond to the ring. So if, you, if, if that makes any sense, if you're familiar with Cassandra, you know, it's a, it's a ring model, and we need to narrow down um, the, uh, the query to the part of the ring that the query should apply to, uh, and then we, we need to cache those, those queries, so we use the per segment filters for that um, with ne the near real time search. Uh, we also support V nodes and composite keys, 3.1. Um, kind of the, there's, the 3.1 is really gonna be a, a, a fairly good achievement, I would say, because um, a lot of the problems that we've, we've had that have been there, I would say nagging solar and maybe data sex enterprise for a while, totally gonna be fixed. Yeah, everything will be pretty smooth, I think. Um, but one, one feature that will be really good in the future that we'll, we'll be adding really soon is uh, multiple data center uh, index re-indexing. So that way, uh, I, call it, I call it live re-indexing basically. So you can have, if you've got a production app and you wanna change the schema, you don't have to take any downtime. Um, you, if you have multiple data centers, you just take one data center out, you re-index that, take another data center out, re-index that one, um, and you should be able to stay online all the time. So that is something that I would say that's fairly advanced in no, nothing else is gonna offer that. Elasticsearch, Solar Cloud, it's not gonna offer that, I don't think. Um, and then we also, um, we're, we're looking at making ways so you can actually write CQL and it'll just translate it into solar for you and just run it. Uh, I think that'll be pretty cool. Skip the demo. So one of the things I like to go over uh, that I find people don't, don't talk about enough is um, how would you, you know, if, you, if, you, if you've got a, an existing application that's in SQL, you know, Oracle or something like that, how do you convert that into solar? And there's not, one of the things I found is there's not really good guides for that. So we're just gonna go over some basic uh, SQL queries and like how those look uh, for solar. Um, basically, you always start with a solar config. It's just an XML file with a bunch of crazy options. Um, it, 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 it's, it's a little bit, it's a, it could be a little bit easier to use right now, but it's, you know, maybe, maybe we'll fix that in the future. Um, there's soft commit times. Uh, soft commit is basically committing uh, an index into RAM first, and then later on it goes to disk. Uh, we, in, in DataSex Enterprise, the transaction log is, is held in Cassandra. Uh, so if a node uh, blinks out, um, you don't lose any data. Not only because of the whole replication and the quorums and stuff like that, but uh, because of the uh, Cassandra commit log. So if a node blinks out, it just, when it pops back up again, then we just go through the commit log and it just re-indexes, so uh, that's pretty good. And um, a hard commit is just kind of a concept that's good to know, which is, that's a hard uh, F-sync of the uh, in-memory Lucene index to disk or SSD. This is, this is what the auto soft commit looks like. I'm just kind of like, going super fast through stuff because there's not a lot of time. But the slides, the slides will be available later. Um, so field cache is really a really an important, an important concept to know about. Anytime you do a sort or a facet query, typically it's gonna load this, these uh, heap structures, these heap-based data structures into RAM. Uh, in Solar 4.3, there's a, an option for keeping it on, on disk or in, on the SSD or whatever. Uh, but this is an important concept to kind of know about because um, customers will typically try to run a sort or a facet query and then all of a sudden their whole system goes out of memory. Uh, and that's, that's, it's bad in production and bad in general. So it's a good uh, concept to, to know about. So Solar J HTTP, basically everything with Solar is HTTP based. Of course, we also support uh, inserting data using CQL. Uh, there's no way to do uh, CQL queries to Solar, or I should say there is, but you shouldn't use it. So every, if you're doing queries, it's always HTTP based. 
and you can insert data via CQL or you can use the native solar API. So basically, if you've already got a solar application, um, you can drop in DS, DataStax Enterprise and everything basically will just work. Uh, let's see, so yeah, inserting data with CQL. We support copy fields via CQL. We support dynamic fields. It's kind of odd, but we, we, we do support that fully now. Um, uh, yeah, so we have this, we have a, you can do solar queries via CQL, I don't recommend it. I've only used it for debugging, because it only hits one node, it doesn't distribute the query out, and it's, it's very limited, so. We, we may address that in the future, but it's not, uh, probably not in the near future. So this is what, this is what a typical, uh, you know, CQL insert looks like, if you're familiar with CQL. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't look that special, probably. So we're just gonna kind of stream through some SQL stuff really quick. So what, what would a typical, this is like the, your most basic SQL query, right? It's select star from a table where something, you know, type equals PDF, whatever. So what, what does that query look like in solar? Basically, uh, you, solar uses HTTP, so these are, you get the HTTP parameter Q equals uh, type that type is the field um, as defined in the schema. It will also be a column in Cassandra. Um, and then it, we're looking for a PDF. Uh, there's no need to create specific, uh, like in, in SQL you would create an index on something, like a B-tree index. Lucene provides the indexing kind of very out of the box. So instead of having, um, I think you could probably, I think Lucene probably supports more uh, indexes uh, more fields having an index than probably an SQL database, I haven't tested that. But hey, flipping, turning, you know, just indexing anything, even over indexing is fine, I, I, I think, with Lucene. So, and then what, so if you want to select columns, um, this, is, this is what it would look like. Uh, if we want title and text only, um, and we want to get all the data in solar, it would be the Q. Q uh, asterisk colon asterisk, and that returns everything. Uh, and then you just put in FL parameter, which stands for like fields. And then you just do title, comma, text. So that's some pretty basic stuff. Uh, if you want to do a count star, then you would just run the query, and it solo returns the total num found fairly quickly. Uh, so, and what does an order by look like? So an order by is just sorting. So you can see there we have sort equals price ascending. Um, you can have multiple sort queries. And all this is uh, gonna go, it's gonna execute the query, I would say, pretty fast. Uh, so if you wanna do an average price, you can actually do that as well. So that would be, like an a, that would be in, considered an aggregate function. Um, so you would do a define stats equals true, stats, field is price, and then it just computes the average for you. Uh, if you want to add a group by, then you add the uh, stats dot facet. So that's going to actually do this, simulate, do the same thing as a uh, group by uh, func SQL type of function. Um, and the most basic thing of all, I'd say, if you're converting like a text-based app, you may use the like uh, operation and the, the, way, the way to map that is to, instead of using a percent sign, you just use an asterisk. All right. Nice. Okay. So um, I guess we can take, just jam through that really fast, but um, hopefully you're not totally tired and bored. Uh, what's, uh, any, do we, any, any questions? No, okay. Yeah, oh, sorry. So is, is Solar in a different node or is it in the same or you put in a different server? Uh, yeah, so Solar is, is fully integrated. It's in the same process same as process. Cassandra oh, okay. and Hadoop and all that stuff. So we've, we fully merged everything. Is, is it a way to, there's no way to so separate the, So the question is, uh, is there a different process or a different node for solar? There, there are different nodes. I mean, you can have Cassandra, 
Cassandra nodes or Cassandra plus solar nodes, but it's, there's always Cassandra there. And then the question is, is there a different process? And there's no, it's, everything's in one process. We, we made a conscious effort to do that uh, because it's, we're just, we're, the, the two are just totally tied together, basically. Uh, question? So, um, so if you're trying to do some kind of time-based roll-up, like exceptions or counts over time, mm -hmm. how does uh, using something like a roll-up compare to just indexing that into solar and then doing f time facets? I'm sorry, what, it's, uh, you, you want to do a time roll-up? Yeah. Can you uh, do that and then you want to do, you, you don't, well, don't want to use facets or you do? I'm saying how does it compare to just keeping a count? Um, in terms of what, performance? Performance or, or scalability. Yeah, I mean, facets in solar are pretty fast. So, I mean, you, you'd have to test it out. Yeah, you could keep the count or you could use the facets. I think it depends on uh, what works best. Like if you want to enable more ad hoc queries over different uh, ranges, for example, then solar, you know, it'll probably be better just to keep the raw data in solar and then execute the uh, accounts that way. Yeah. Hi. Uh, when your actually uh, repair is running in Cassandra, mm -hmm. uh, how are the indexes, are the in indexes also rebuilt? Or uh, if, say for example, during a repair, a data is fixed on Cassandra, how is the uh, solar index reconsolidated? Yeah, so, we're, so we're, we are, we're keeping the independent in index per node. And um, indexing is typically actually fairly fast these days, especially given that it's multi-threaded. So uh, in, in, it, when a repair happens, a full re-index occurs. Or in, not a full re-index, but it, with the data that's moved, is, is re a new index is created for that data. Yeah. If I understood your question, right. Yeah. Right. Right. It, it's 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 actually re-indexed during the repair. Yeah, while well, the repair is happening, yeah. Early on, you said that um, data stack supports faceting, but then when you were showing the future slide, you said in the future. Faceting will be supported. So what well, do you it's mean? it's really it's more efficient. It's faster and more efficient faceting. So we 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 made a conscious effort because most of our customers do uh, near real time search. We want faceting to also be near real time. So we made sure all that is every type of faceting thing you want to do, and everything else is all tuned for near real time. It's optimized for near real time search, which is typically what people do when they're or want when they're using Cassandra or no SQL systems. So you mentioned that um, Cassandra and Solar are, gonna be, are running on the same process. Yeah, yeah. Um, is there any way to monitor like the effect of the Solar searches versus Cassandra work? Is there different threads running? Or it's all integrated? Uh, I mean, typically, I don't think there's a lot of issues around that. I mean, typically, there's, I wouldn't say there's a lot of CPU co uh, competition. I would say typically there's, the issues are around memory. So the, the memory footprint and the memory usage by solar is completely different than Cassandra. So uh, yeah, probably, we probably could do a little, I think we need to do more work around sort of monitoring, allowing people to monitor the memory situation of Cassandra, the memory situation of solar, and maybe you know, alerting people when, hey, look at the heap's totally fried increase it or you know, add more nodes or do something because the whole system's failing due to memory. But CPU, I don't think it's, I typically don't see a lot of CPU problems. I mean, you would think logically there would be, but there, we just haven't seen it. So there's not any solar queries you could do that were inefficient enough to hog the CPU? Well, it, it, even if it did, it would only be a single thread. Um, and it's, it's, I would say, t typically it's very difficult to do that. Uh, the only, usually that, that may only happen if you're doing something crazy like with, with fastening with the older solar stuff. 
you're doing fastening and it's loading these, trying to load these big data structures in the RAM and then it's just, oh, well, it's just uh, out of memory constantly, that's just going to fry, that will fry the system. But if you've got like a query that's just taking a long time, that would, that would mean that the rest of your system is hosed anyway because the, uh, it's, hit, it's probably going to be hitting disk. That would be the only way to really. Right, well, that's my point. If that was occurring, it'd be nice to know that that was solar and not Cassandra. Some way to determine it. That's, that's kind of your getting to the yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, my real yeah, question. yeah, this, if that's. If something is hosed up, how do you know what it is? You yeah, that's a good point. I mean, it, we, do, we do need to, uh, yeah, we, I think we need to provide better uh, monitoring of low level details. The, the question would be how. I mean, the, the simple answer is it, would, it ends up looking like, in my opinion, like a log, a real time log analysis tool. Um, which was, would be like Splunk or, you know, Elasticsearch is actually investing in so a similar thing. So nothing in place right so now. What's that? So there's nothing in place right now. Yeah. Well, I think there is. It's, it's basically you look at the log. You look at the log data. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thanks.